Hey guys, uh, today I'm reading uh, James Gleek, Time Travel. It's a fascinating book. Uh, some of the references in here are uh, made, uh, uh, rather some of the references here talk about things that happened in America and the West in 1920s, 1930s. Luckily, I read uh, uh, Bill Bryson's book, One Summer in America, and uh, some of these references have come here, uh, particularly those of radio, those of television, and uh, things like uh, Dempsey, who was a boxer, uh, which uh, he finds mention in that book also. Uh, but here, uh, I'm on the fourth chapter, I think, uh, it's a very fascinating discussion which I wanted to read. Uh, this is a short poem at first. Let me read that. It's by John Henry Newman, a poet and a priest. He wrote that, and this is the poem. Time is not a common property, but what is long is short, and swift is slow, and near is distant as received and grasped. By this mind, and by that, and everyone is standard of his own chronology. It's, uh, you know, uh, it is fascinating. But uh, uh, here is, uh, you know, uh, th then he talks about uh, the different time zones. And then uh, a letter by Charles Lamb uh, to his friend Baron Field. And he says, your now is not my now. Your then is not my then, but my now may be your then, and vice versa. Whose head is competent to these things, he asks. So these, he's talking about time zones, and in fact today we do have time zones and we do understand them. But uh, uh, one William Gibson, he made an account uh, of soul of delay. Soul delay, sorry, is soul delay. That is S O U L, soul delay. So, what he's saying is he's describing uh, the jet lag. So, her mortal soul is leagues behind her, being reeled in on some ghostly umbilical down the vanished wake of the plane that brought her here, hundreds of thousands of feet above the Atlantic. Souls can't move that quickly and are left behind and must be awaited upon arrival like lost luggage and it is it is really fascinating the way they describe and you know uh, jet lag it's, it's it's a common thing now we we really know what jet lag is not a big deal but it's fascinating how uh, uh, it is described it's this is a very very beautiful book about time travel and uh, it starts, uh, you know, he's talking about the scientific time travel, not that people dream, in dreams they can travel, not that kind of travel, not they go in the future, they go in the past, not that kind of travel, but a scientific concept of time travel. And uh, that, he says, it begins with uh, the novel called The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, who to, to many extent is one of the first uh, or rather second well-known uh, science fiction writer. And you find uh, the references to H.G. Wells and scientific fiction uh, in Stephen King's books. Uh, not his novels, but his, uh, his writing on writing. So his book about writing, he's got a lot of fiction uh, he writes uh, scientific fiction. So uh, Stephen King talks talks about these very very briefly. He talks more about others, but uh, it, it goes through that, and it's a fascinating book. And I'm looking forward to learning more and more things. So he's now coming. Uh, he's described the Newtonian time, which is sort of an absolute, and Einsteinian Einstein's time, which is non-absolute. It's a relative. And uh, we'll see how it goes. And the, some of the thought experiments that, uh, you know, uh, 
frame of reference are all included so let's see how it goes it seems to be a fascinating book and uh, till now I've reached I think page 79 is fascinating I'm sure it goes really well uh, all the way it's about 300 pages not big so see you and I'll uh, keep you posted on what interesting things I find in here thank you